Welcome to the Movie Spoiler Club, the channel where you can watch movie, television, and streaming series within minutes. Today we're going to spoil the movie The Incredible Hulk, 2008. This movie story plot is about scientist Bruce Banner, Edward Norton, desperately seeks a cure for the gamma radiation that contaminated his cells and turned him into the Hulk. Cut off from his true love Betty Ross, Liv Tyler, and forced to hide from his nemesis, General Thunderbolt Ross, William Hurt. Banner soon comes face to face with a new threat, a supremely powerful enemy known as the Abomination, Tim Roth. The movie's opening credit scene consists of a flashback sequence of showing the events on the birth of the Incredible Hulk. We see a gamma ray experiment done on the scientist Bruce Banner and that something went wrong. Through Banner's eyes, we see him turning into a figure like a giant, destroying the lab, and escaping the premise killing a few scientists and injuring General Ross and his daughter. Betty. Next, we see Banner sitting at the bedside of unconscious Betty at the hospital, and her father Ross comes into the ward screams at Banner. Bruce flees, and nobody has seen him ever since. General Ross tries everything to track down Bruce's location, to get hold of Bruce's new game power and weaponize it, but no sightings of him for about five months. In a town in Brazil, Bruce wakes up after having a nightmare about past events. On screen, we see days without incident 158. He seems to be living alone in a room with a dog. We see his daily routine. He prepares breakfast, feeds the dog, and leaves for his anger management training. There he learns the way to keep his pulse rate stable, without getting panicked, angry or excited. Because whenever his heart rate rises over 200 beats per minute, he would transform into Hulk, the green giant that caused the incident that Bruce is having nightmares about. After the lessons, he goes to work as a day laborer at a bottling factory. He occasionally helps the manager with fixing up the broken electronic devices in the factory. This day too, while he fixes a device, he cuts up his finger and a drop of blood falls to a bottle that was being manufactured. Bruce being unaware of the blood contamination, the bottle was transported to the United States. At the end of that day when Bruce was about to go home after work, he sees some bullies in the factory coming on to Martina. Bruce's female co-worker. When Bruce tries to take her away, the bullies come on to quarrel with him. Bruce tells them not to make him hungry. Bullies ignore and come on to him. But fortunately, the manager appears and sends them home. On the way back home, Bruce picks up a delivery parcel from an equipment. He gets home and takes his computer and opens an encrypted chat and sends a message to Mr. Blue, saying that he has found it. Mr. Blue replies saying to be sure to take a high dose this time. Bruce opens up the parcel. There's a flower in it. Bruce uses the whole flower to make a juice solution out of it and tests it by applying to his blood sample. Not happy with the results, Bruce tells Mr. Blue that it was another failure. Mr. Blue tells him that he needs a blood sample to take a look at, and Bruce sends it to him by post. Meanwhile, in the USA, General Ross hears of a report of a possible gamma sickness that occurred to an old man in Milwaukee after he drank a bottle of fruit juice. Ross finds this interesting and give an order to find out the location of the bottle factory. He sets up a team including a fighter named Emil Blonsky, and then they land in Brazil to capture Bruce alive. General tells the team that they're looking for a US fugitive scientist who has stolen military secrets. As the team flies down to Brazil, Bruce is contacted by Mr. Blue regarding the received blood sample. Mr. Blue tells him there's a possibility that he can cure Mr. Green, the Hulk but informs that he needs more biological data of Bruce. Bruce says that the data is at home, in the USA, and then shuts down the computer. While he was sleeping that night, his dog suddenly started barking, waking Bruce up. Bruce realizes that something's wrong, and he escapes immediately before the team breaks into the room. But Blonsky spots him on the ground and the team starts chasing Bruce through verandas and rooftops. As Bruce is running, unfortunately, he's confronted with the bully gang who troubled him at the factory, and they also start chasing him. Bruce escapes them and runs away, only to be cornered into a building. He checks his heart rate meter and it seems that it was closing into 200. The gang captures him and starts hitting while Bruce begs them not to make him angry. Meanwhile, the military team has also come into the building and they see the quarrel of the bullies with Bruce. As a troop shoots a tranquilizer dart at one bully, Bruce's eyes become green and his body shape changes while the other bullies are looking at their unconscious pal. They blame Bruce for that too and turn to fight Bruce again. But then the gang leader gets thrown away for a large distance. Bruce has become the giant Hulk and he smashes his way out to escape the premise and heads to the jungle. Troops open fire on him but the darts don't seem to have any effect on him. The next day, Bruce wakes up in a jungle wearing only a torn up trouser, 
and we see day one without incident on the screen. He hears a truck coming and goes to the road. The driver tells Bruce that he's in Guatemala and agrees to get Bruce a ride to the town. Bruce buys some new stretchy clothes and goes up north to get to the USA. Meanwhile, the military team went back to the USA and Blonsky insists on General to explain to him what went on there in the chase. General explains to him that he was trying to reboot a project named Super Soldier that was done in World War II. He had hired Bruce Banner as a scientist for the project, and how the experiment went very wrong, or very right, depending on the point of view. Blonsky tells Ross that if he could be his younger self, he may be able to fight with Hulk and take him out. General says that he can arrange for something like that. We see Bruce standing in front of the Culver University, and on the screen, it says 17 days without incident. He sees Betty coming out, but she walks away with her boyfriend without seeing Bruce. Deterred, Bruce turns back and goes to a pizza place of Stanley, an old friend of Bruce. Stanley is happy to see Bruce and offers him a place to stay for a couple of days. The next day, Bruce goes into the university science lab where the experiment on him was conducted pretending to be a pizza deliverman. He looks for the data in the computers but finds out that all the data regarding the project and Bruce has been erased from the databases. Discouraged, Bruce decides to go out of town, since now there's no way to find the data needed for curing him. He goes to the shop to say goodbye to Stanley, but sees Betty with her boyfriend there, and turns back. Betty catches a glimpse of Bruce at the door and gets shocked. She runs to the back of the shop but Bruce is gone. She asks Stanley what happened and goes on by car searching for Bruce around the city. She finds him walking in the rain. So, she runs to him and unites, and tells him not to go and come with her. Bruce goes to her house where she hands over a flash drive containing the needed data from the experiment that she extracted before Ross erased the files in the lab. Bruce says that it's not safe for both of them and he has to leave as early as possible. Betty agrees but insists on walking him to the station. Meanwhile, we see Blonsky getting injected a small dose of the same solution as the one Bruce got previously. While they are walking the next morning, they get spotted and surrounded by the forces near the university premises. Bruce tells Betty to stay away from him and then runs into the university, being chased by the troops. Betty goes in front of the military vehicles and begs her father, General Ross, to stop but he ignores her. Bruce swallows the flash drive that consists of the data just before he gets cornered in fog with canisters. The troops and Betty watch as Bruce transforms into the Hulk and breaks out from the building into the open. There he receives a load of bullets, sonic sound waves, and grenade explosions. Blonsky fights him but gets knocked down and injured. Betty watches everything and starts walking towards Hulk, ignoring the screaming of her father and her boyfriend. Samson. A helicopter comes up above and starts shooting Hulk putting Betty into danger too who was close to Hulk. Hulk throws a metal board that he's been using as a shield so far at the helicopter, making it crash landing, making an explosion on the ground. Hulk covers Betty to save her from the explosion, and after that, he flees and takes Betty with him. After the events, we see Rossi's troops taking Betty's stuff out of her house, and Ross tells Samson that he did the right thing by calling Ross. But Samson is unhappy and tells that Ross is a bigger threat to Betty since Hulk tried to protect Betty from the attack that General Ross ordered. That night, Betty wakes up in a cave located in mountains. She sees Hulk screaming at the thunder. She calms him down and gets him to sleep. The next morning when Bruce woke up, Betty takes him to a town, gets them in a motel room and buys him clothes and some stuff including a heart rate meter. Bruce takes a shower and coughs up the flash drive he swallowed before. The next day they throw away everything that could be traced by General and pawn Betty's necklace to rent a car. While she's doing that, Bruce goes to an internet facility and sends the data to Mr. Blue saying that it's time to meet him. While they are driving to Greyburn College to meet Mr. Blue, we see that Blonsky is healed from injuries and ready for round three. The military traces the message that Bruce sent to Mr. Blue and finds out that Bruce is going to Greyburn College. Mr. Blue, which was the alias used by Dr. Stearns, is thrilled to meet his unseen friend Bruce, and he explains the consequences that can occur if the antidote dosage goes wrong. They get on with the experiment, get Bruce laid down on a bed, and tied up. They use an electrical pulse to get Bruce excited and turn him into Hulk, and then insert the antidote. The antidote takes effects and turns Bruce back to the human form. In the aftermath discussion, Stearns mentions of test subjects and shows them that he has made many more samples by concentrating the blood samples that Bruce sent him. As Bruce tells Stearns that they have to destroy those samples because of their potential of danger, a tranquilizer dart shot from distance hits Bruce and he falls unconscious. While General Ross takes Bruce into custody, Blonsky takes on Stearns and threads him to make him a solution from Bruce's blood samples so that Blonsky can become a monster like Hulk. 
Stearns has to agree, but Stearns tells him that since Blonsky already has a small dose in him already, the mixing up could make an abomination. Blonsky ignores and becomes an even bigger monster than Hulk after the injection. It knocks Stearns dead and then gets into the street, destroying everything. General Ross is terrified when he sees the abominated monster tearing the city apart and realizes what he has done. Bruce says that he's the only person that has a chance of defeating him. Ross agrees and orders the helicopter to get to the ground, but Bruce tells the pilot to stay and drop him high. Betty begs Bruce not to do it since there is a risk of Bruce may not transform again, but Bruce tells her that he has to do this, kisses her, and jumps off the helicopter, concentrating hard. He crashes onto the ground, then the giant hand of Hulk comes out. Bruce has transformed back to Hulk, revealing that the antidote has just given him more control instead of completely taking it off. Then a fight begins between the two giants, ending up finally with Hulk wrapping a huge chain around the neck of the abominated monster and making it unconscious. Just as he goes to the final pull of the chain to kill the monster, Betty screams him to stop, and Hulk obeys and tosses it on land. Then. He sees the surrounding gunmen and the flashlights, and Hulk flees away from premises, jumping off the rooftops. Next, we see Bruce in British Columbia after 31 days without incidents. He writes a letter to Betty and sends her back the necklace they pawned in it. Then Bruce sits on the floor and starts meditating, concentrating hard. Within a short time, he opens up eyes again, and we see that they're glowing green as while well, the transformation happens. Bruce has taken control of it and now can transform whenever he wants to. In the final scene of the movie, we see Tony Stark comes to meet General Ross at a bar. Stark offers his condolences for General's defeat and says that he heard that General has an unusual problem and says we're putting up a team together. The movie ends with the General asking who's we? Movie Trivia Do you know that Louis Letter wanted Mark Ruffalo for the role of Bruce Banner? but Marvel insisted on Edward Norton. Ironically, Ruffalo would go on to replace Norton as Banner in future Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. This movie gets the movie rating of 6.7 from IMDb, to Matometer rating of 67 and audience score of 70 from Rotten Tomatoes. Thank you for watching and be sure to hit like, subscribe, share your thoughts in the comment section, and hit the notification bell for the new movie Splow video every week.